Anybody out there ever Google like interior design for dudes, interior design for guys, interior design for men? It's kind of hard to find anything on that. You might be able to find some spaces that are like masculine and look where you're like, okay, cool, that's cool. But there's very little information out there about like, how do I do this? So today's video is pretty much exactly that. How's it going, y'all? My name is Jesse Lynch, and I run a short-term rental management and partnership company called Made Rare. You can check out our website, maderare.com. But this YouTube channel is pretty much all about helping you just get the most out of your short-term rental that you can possibly get out of it. Today's video is like a little bit of a departure from that, but I still think it can really sort of apply to a lot of people out there. I see a lot of very bachelor patty kind of you know airbnb spaces they'll be like oh check out this penthouse and you're like it's designed terribly you know maybe it's a remarkable uh space but the design is like really just like not doing it for me at least so the other day i actually set up this apartment for my buddy paul who's actually right behind the camera, buddy, business partner, Paul, sweet pea. And we designed this one bedroom apartment in downtown Minneapolis for Paul. This is where Paul lives. And we documented the whole thing. But this video is sort of a, an accompaniment to that, a, a brother, a sister video to that, which is more so like, why do I make those choices? Why do I think that these you know choices are smart and sort of like how to go about the process from start to finish, what are the things to consider, and all that. So we're just gonna be in this apartment the whole time, just kind of like talking through the individual choices that I made and sort of the bigger theory involved with those choices. Okay, so the way I see it, there are sort of seven principles, I don't know, whatever, I just made this up, but there's seven principles to design, and specifically design for guys or masculine interior design, design for dudes, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, seven rules, and the first of which I talk about all the time, I've, I feel like I've said this and people like look at me like I'm crazy, but I talk about composition. And I really think of interior design as a composition in the same way that one might compose a photo or compose a song or composing a logo or a website or something like that. All of these things are very like subliminal and they're things that we consider, but we might go through life and a lot, I think a lot of guys go through life, not thinking about the composition of a space and not thinking about like, why does a place look good? So I'm gonna say the seven fundamentals of good design. Fundamental number one is composition. If there are any photographers out there, you probably know that there are sort of rules to composition. You can break rules within composition and it can turn out really cool, but you have to be breaking it on purpose with sort of an intent in mind. But in general, we like a sort of well-composed photo or let's say a frame from a movie or a scene from a movie. Great cinematography, composition is huge, the lighting, the framing, that has so much to do with it. So I like to look at every wall, every sort of possible angle that you're viewing a room from. I view that as a potential sort of still from a movie, a photo, in general, a frame that I'm trying to compose. But I basically think of it in sort of these four uh, categories, your main pieces, your special pieces, your materials, and then plants. I think these are extremely important and budgetarily, depending on where you are, I think you have a lot of options. Don't think like, well, I don't have a lot of money, so I just have to order this from Walmart or something like that. My God, there are some very affordable options, whether you go used or whether you find some cheaper stuff new, there truly there are options. In terms of your main pieces, we're talking couch, coffee table, desk, we're talking uh, sort of a media console, bed, dresser if you have one, maybe a dining room table if you have one, this place doesn't have one. Uh, th those big pieces of furniture that typically cost the most money, but again, they don't necessarily have to. So the, <laughs> the first thing that I wanna hammer home about these pieces is for Christ's sake, don't go to like home furniture or whatever huge like regional furniture store you have and just buy a set. I think set furniture is like the worst, the ugliest, the least inspired stuff 
that you can possibly do. That said, a lot of people don't care. So I, I don't like not like people that have this furniture, but I'm like, it is the last thing that I would do would be to buy a whole set of furniture. Mixing and matching and finding things that are unique. I like to mix retailers. I like to mix like where I'm sourcing these things from. In this space, we have this couch, which is from Ikea. Ikea, you could really go down a really matchy matchy sort of like obnoxious, very ikea and out aesthetic. But Paul had this couch before, it was awesome. If you watch the other video where we set the space up, you'll see that Paul had like an ikea coffee table, a couple ikea end tables. That really lends itself to feeling super cheap and very ikea. You want to be able to blend sort of those manufacturers and blend aesthetics. Don't get too matchy matchy. That's just kind of like rule number one. That said, the desk behind us is from Ikea. I think a special hack for buying things from Ikea is seeing if you can find them on like a Facebook marketplace. For one, they're cheaper. Two, they're already put together. So you can kind of like not have to deal with putting it together. And knowing where to spend the good money on your main pieces, right? This couch is not super cheap, but it's not three grand either. You know, it's a good sort of chunk of money for this couch but it's solid, you know, it, Paul sat on it and made sure that it was indeed comfortable and felt sturdy. But then we're gonna hop over here real quick. And so like, for one, this is just a coffee table. This is, I think, just from Wayfair, probably under a hundred dollars, not bad. We got it from my shop. <laughs> it was already just sit, sitting in my shop, which is actually from a previous uh, Airbnb duplex that I had. Um, but yeah, so this was kind of a leftover, but it works very, very well in this space. This uh, sort of entertainment center or media console or whatever, this is something Paul made. I love that. If you can do that, sweet, but I know a lot of people can. So they're like, okay, well, cool. You might be able to find something like this on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Etsy, something where somebody makes it by hand. But you also can find a solution for this that is shaped very similarly, maybe different materials, um, maybe for cheaper than even what Paul made it for. But this is interesting and because it's a main piece, I love that it's something Paul made. Over here in the bedroom, Paul made this bed frame as well. And this bed frame is pretty much perfect for this house. You can hardly see it right now because it's covered up by the blanket, which I actually think looks sharp. But again, a bed frame, you can get it from a bunch of different places and just make sure that it's in line with the sort of aesthetics of your other things, but not super matchy matchy. And then the third fundamental to me is special pieces, unique pieces, interesting pieces, moments of interest within your decor. So I'm actually just gonna grab the camera from Paul and kind of first person show you what I'm talking about. Since we're already in here, we'll just start over here. This is one of my favorite sort of moves like in, <laughs> in all of uh, sort of masculine interior design. It's a crate that basically acts as a nightstand. This is actually an old Anheuser-Busch uh, Budweiser crate, which is really cool. You know, Paul drinks beer. This is just like kind of a cool piece of Americana that sort of speaks to Paul. This could be anything. There's actually one that I have uh, in these videos that says like Snowboy on it. I think it's like pears or something like that, but I think, it, I think it's beautiful. Um, and I just love like the graphic and the design on it. This one is very masculine and you know, you put a little soft light up there. Don't make this overly masculine. And then this whole thing kinda really works. I was working on some video stuff, so I'm just gonna shoot around them. So as far as special pieces go, when I look in this room, there's a few things that really come to mind and how I sort of think about it. So first of all, Paul's a musician. I'm a musician. I love hanging uh, instruments as sort of wall art. Now it can get out of control. If you have six of them hung up next to each other, it can kind of start to look like a guitar center. And then I think that's not the move. Also, you know, depending on the aesthetic of the guitar, I love these natural wood tones. I think they look beautiful on the wall. And, you know, I mean, this one's just, it's cool. Old PV, very, very cool. Uh, cool shape and, and is somewhat interesting as well. But this little section that we did, I think really does a good example of kind of showing these little special pieces. So for one, with these special pieces, I think you, you wanna make it apply to your life. And literally everything up here, 
applies to Paul. Uh, I think it's, it's pretty cool that in how it works. For example, these are old um, Edison record cylinders. This is kind of before records were uh, discs like we know now. And I just think this is really cool. This is old school music. Again, Paul's a musician, a lover of music. This is whiskey. And now it's not just whiskey in a whiskey bottle. That is not decor. Unless there's a bunch, that could be decor. But I think this decanter, what a cool way to display whiskey. It's masculine, but it's not over the top, right? It's not just like a Jack Daniels bottle just <laughs> sitting there. It's cool it, it, and it's aesthetically pleasing. Light will come in, will refract off of this and just look really beautiful. And then up here, I mean, this stuff is fairly obvious. This is an old minnow bucket that we put a plant in. I'll touch on this a little bit more. Uh, but this, obviously, Paul does video and Paul is into cameras and all of that. So a camera, I love a camera as sort of decor. And I think it really just, there's something masculine about it, right? It has a bit of like a mechanical aspect to it, but it's not so, you know, over the top masculine. And it's also, also not too like on the nose that it's like, hey, I heard you like photography. So I got you this, you know, lens coffee mug. Right? You know, I've seen those. I mean, maybe they're cool, but that's just like kind of kitschy. This is kind of classic and I think truly interesting to look at. It shows a little bit of history. It is masculine and sort of it's aesthetic, but it's not inherently masculine. It's music. Everybody likes music. And for that, I'm actually just going to go to this little section right here. Now, this might look super simple and honestly, it is. But there's a reason that this is cooler and more masculine than just going and buying a shelf from a store. For one, obviously the rough cut wood and sort of the patina on the wood. It makes it feel older, a little more rustic, but not over the top, right? You can get over the top rustic, but this I would say is not over the top rustic, especially when surrounded by new flooring, you know, new trim work, white walls, and then you have other things to sort of change it up, soften it up. And the combination of hard and soft materials to me is everything when it comes to making a space uh, beautiful and masculine and not over the top, you know, bro -y. So materials that you're going to want to include, right? Wood, different varieties of wood. So one of the big things that I want to hammer home is that the materials really play a role in sort of shaping the space. I'm a big believer in mixing materials and doing so tastely. So maybe I could make a whole other video on like how to mix wood tones or how to mix metals or, or whatever. But to me, uh, it comes somewhat inherently. So I'll almost have to like break down uh, what I think and why I think that things work together. But so for example, in this space, there's, there's two wood tones, right? There's this rough, uh, rough cut, lighter, more um, like yellowy wood tone. And then there's this very dark sort of smooth walnut. These contrast and that actually works extremely well. And not only that, but there are, there are knots in this lighter color wood that are almost the same sort of tone as this walnut. So also this is a howling wolf. I think it's sweet. I think it's a very cool uh, sort of piece to use as a bookend. Now, vintage books, I'm a, I'm a big fan of those. First of all, take whatever, whatever wrapper is on the outside of your book, whatever like book protector is on your book, take that off, show the real spine of your hardcover book and it will look a lot better, even a newer book. But these vintage books, super cool, just like a cool little moment within the space. And then actually, I'm gonna kind of zoom in on this stuff to show you. So right here, this is actually a new sort of pot for a new fiddle leaf fig plant. It's real, we're gonna talk about plants in a second, but this is from Ikea. But when it's mixed in with all of this, it doesn't look, you know, too much like you got it from Ikea. But when it's mixed in with all of this goodness, that doesn't look like Ikea. And then just to go up from here, one thing that I'm a huge fan of, no, it's not clocks, although I think that's really cool. I think it's old sort of mechanical things. If they can actually work like this clock does, all the better, but they don't necessarily have to. And that's masculine without being overtly masculine.
And I mentioned metals earlier. There's really no metal over on that little section. There are metals over there. There's mixed metals as well. But I think the, the most important thing is to find a mixed metal that sort of has a finish that makes sense. And in general, more of a matte finish to a metal works in, in what we're doing here. I think like a shiny silver, I might've mentioned this already, but a shiny silver with like a black leather, it looks like a tattoo shop, right? Which is fine and, and can be somewhat masculine, but you can get really over the top and feel very like almost commercial with too much of that going on. But over there we have a metal on the globe. It's like a bronzy, kind of dark bronze metal. It might even be painted metal, but uh, it's cool. It's kind of a dark color. And then there's also the chrome of the like old minnow bucket, right? The old bait bucket, but it's very patinaed and very matted and feels uh, timeless as far as I'm concerned. Other things that I think fit into like a masculine design would be um, sort of advertising, right? So, so like logos and especially when you think of like more masculine side of things so motorcycles cars you know even like things associated with cars so like oil or uh, like a gas station or something like that but you can get really sort of kitschy and, and it can start to feel like you're at like a, a TGI Fridays if you have too much of that stuff in it so be careful with that and uh, there are things where I'm like I get why people think it's cool like a street sign I almost never <laughs> like how a street sign looks in a space, you know, like a big stop sign on a wall. That feels college-y, right? That feels like I lived in a dorm, uh, I went to a party, we got drunk and we stole a stop sign because, you know, we were dumb, right? That doesn't feel like, oh, I'm an adult and I care about my space and so I wanna feel a certain way. Also, I mean, psychologically, a big stop sign on your wall? What do, what do you think that does? <laughs> Psychologically, that doesn't seem like it would actually benefit you at all. You wake up and you're like, stop. But also, I mean, we have a globe, but things like old maps, I love old maps, I like old school maps, but I also like old maps that are framed and there's all sorts of sizes of those things. You can get a huge map that covers a big, huge wall or you can get a smaller map and those are very, very easy to find and then it's just a matter of finding the right frame. By the way, let me quick talk about frames. Picture frames, uh, I love photography. I'm a photographer, so I like to sort of display that art, those moments and those what I think are beautiful images that I've captured. I really like to display that. That said, that can get tricky if the print doesn't turn out good. But I think one of the best ways to make a print, whether that's an actual photo that you've taken or somebody you know has taken, um, or just some print that you got off Etsy or something like that. The best way to make that feel adult and cool and, and honestly like beautiful is by having a nice frame, like a, a substantial frame. It doesn't have to be actually like chunky, but it needs to feel and look solid. But then even more important than that to me is the matting, right? You have the frame and then you have the white around the edge and that is called the matting. And I might've said it earlier or in the other video, but to me that mat, the picture being with in that mat is what sort of separates a photo or whatever, a print, from feeling like you framed a poster versus feeling like you have a beautiful piece of art that you're trying to really, you know, show respect. And again, so much of this is about showing your space respect and showing yourself respect as well. <laughs> Okay, and then fundamental number five to me is just plants, right? I'm a big believer that it's not that hard to care for real plants. There's this idea that it is, but the reality is if you've killed plants in the past, there's a very good chance that it's because you tried too hard, right? <laughs> a lot of plants are really easy and they almost want to be left alone with the occasional bit of water and maybe just the right space in the house. They don't need as much sunlight and as much water as you think, they almost for sure are going to be considerably easier to take care of than what you think. And when it comes to plants, there's so many different great plants out there. You can go to a really nice plant store. Like in Minneapolis, we have a place called Mother. It's beautiful. It's cactuses and, and sort of a lot of like those succulents. But as well, they have, you know, like palms and all sorts of other plants. They're almost always in like a beautiful terracotta pot, which if you don't know, is kind of that like orangey clay color. And that's beautiful. I think that terracotta does a really good job of sort of 
uh, straddling the line between masculine and feminine. And so terracotta for sure can come into any apartment or any space that you're trying to make that could be masculine as long as it matches everything else that's going on. And what plants to get. For the most part, I would say non-flowering plants are going to be masculine, but still soft, right? They, they soften a room, they make a place more livable, they make it feel cozier, more alive, and just more hospitable, right? If a plant can live here, so can a person. So if you're brand new to plants, the first plant that I personally would recommend is called a pothos, P-O-T-H-O-S. You can Google it, they're at Home Depots, they're at like Lowe's, they're really, really easy to find and they are extremely hardy. I had pothos that have not had any sunlight like at all or very, very little, uh, even ambient light. So certainly no direct light, some ambient light, and they live, they remain green, and they honestly, they look happy. But plants are always gonna go in and out of fashion, right? I think a pothos is fairly uh, bulletproof in the future, um, but there are a lot of plants that will sort of rise up to being uh, more and more popular. Like um, back here is a Monstera. A Monstera is a beautiful plant. It's kind of got like a Swiss cheese look to it. I really, they're, they're beautiful plants. Um, and again, not that hard to take care of. A palm is a beautiful plant. Palm can be a little harder to take care of in my opinion. So they're very often cheap and very like readily available. It's been my experience and I've known a lot of people who have killed them for too much water, not enough water, etc. They can be a little bit hard to read. Things like fiddle leaf figs, very, very popular. Um, and then there's even now there's olive trees. Those are really, really popular and sort of coming into vogue. Um, they're beautiful though, but I think there are certain things that are gonna be timeless. One, one plant that I, it's just a personal pet peeve. I just don't think it's that cool. <laughs> it's, it's like an aloe plant. You know, aloe as in like you can break it off and then you can like use the aloe on your, you know, a sunburn or a cut or something like that. If like you actually intend to use it for that, cool. But I think an aloe plant looks dormy, right? Looks amateur, looks like, I don't know, my mom gave me this aloe plant. And actually, I'm gonna turn this up. I'm gonna roll right into sort of uh, fundamental number six, which to me is actual usability, right? How usable is the space? How usable are the items? that you got. You can have a really beautiful space that is not, you, you're never gonna wanna spend time in because you're too afraid you're gonna ruin it or you find that the furniture is uncomfortable. So get, making sure that you think the furniture is comfortable is huge, but some people go fully that way where they're like, I only care if it's comfortable and then it would make this room absolutely hideous, right? So make sure that not only passes the aesthetic and the beauty test, but that it is also comfortable and you will also enjoy your use. But beyond that, make sure that sort of uh, the extra little uh, steps that you take in, in the design don't then cause you too much of a headache to take care of. So for example, a bed, right? This bed is such a piece of cake to, <laughs> to make. It is fundamentally black sheets, this gray comforter, this throw blanket, which is like honestly tiny and, and largely aesthetic. Maybe in the winter that could get beefed up, but then four pillows. Uh, very, very, very easy to make. I think you could probably make this every morning, I don't know, in 30 seconds, right? And again, making the bed, that's, <sighs> respect your space, respect yourself, and your whole sort of life, your whole every day will be a little bit better because you've done that. But if you have some very extravagant, you know, uh, situation going on on your bed, on how your couch is set up, or whatever, anything in your kitchen, if those things are hard to work with, you're not gonna wanna use them, and so you, they're gonna get old, and you're ultimately not going to appreciate the design. So usability, absolutely take that into account. It's not to be sort of forgotten. It's very important and you'll be glad that you did. And then I'm gonna call fundamental number seven is just mistakes to avoid. Very commonly, very easy, people run into these mistakes because they see other people do it or they just haven't actually considered it. Very often people run into these mistakes because they have seen other people do it and they go, oh, that's okay, that's how, that's how you do it, right? I said it earlier, like buying a whole setup at home furniture or something. I think that's a mistake. I think you shouldn't do that. But another mistake that, you know, Paul and I talked about is buying things 
too dark, right? Paul wears black pants and a black shirt very, very often. He rides a black motorcycle, black helmet. Like, he likes those dark colors, right? He likes his black leather couch that you drew, you know, drew him in. If you go everything in that dark tone, then the black of the couch doesn't really matter. It's not cool anymore because literally everything else is that. So you can have a black couch among other things that are not black and that will be cooler. It says something, it becomes more of a statement. And kind of on that same thing, right? Don't buy everything dark and black and you know, you know, navy blue and forest green. Like you can really pull the energy of a room down by just having tones too dark. But you can also really just go over the top and be like, well, I'm a guy, uh, this is my bachelor pad, and so everything's gonna be masculine, and you're afraid to buy anything that on its own might feel soft or feminine or whatever. So for example, I think you can see right over here is a throw blanket. That throw blanket on its own, when you look at it in the store, is fairly feminine, right? It's like knit, it's got the little uh, danglies on it, but when you put it on a black leather couch, literally nobody's going to be like, that's a pretty girly blanket. You know, nobody cares when it's matched well. Personally, I think what it does is it actually makes the black leather couch feel more masculine because you have a, a throw blanket on there that is sort of the opposite, right? I think there's like the idea that if you were happy, if you only felt happiness, would you actually ever feel happiness, right? Which is true of, you know, I think about bands. If a band is only heavy, is that band, do they ever actually feel heavy? If everything is the same dynamic, does it actually feel heavy? And I think that's true of your furniture and your decor as well. You can have dynamics within your furniture, within your decor, and then that makes the more masculine pieces feel more masculine because you have anything at all else in there to sort of counteract that. And then I think the last little mistake to avoid or just be aware of, like, yeah, maybe you are one individual, a bachelor, and you have a bachelor pad. All good, congratulations. Honestly, if you're lucky enough to have a space like this, that can be, you know, a very cool time in your life, a very sort of like, I don't know, uh, important moment in your life. You're on your own, you live there alone, you don't have roommates, and you get to set up a space that is for you. But don't forget that you might have some feminine energy coming into your home. I don't care if that's your mom or your sister, like there might be some, you know, women coming into the space and you s still want them to feel comfortable, right? Or maybe it's somebody you're courting. Like y you want them to feel comfortable and having a variety, having a well thought out space, but also just having anything at all that is not just hyper bro-y, hyper dude, hyper masculine will put that sort of energy at ease, right? But because you have plants or throw pillows or throw blankets or whatever to sort of offset that just ever so slightly, that can make you know a feminine energy fit into this space and feel more comfortable into a space than if it just everything was masculine. All right, and then I kind of have this one sort of last thought. Lighting is honestly a little bit better over here. All right, and then I think one sort of parting thought that I have about the whole idea is that I know a lot of guys who think this way, who, who don't, they don't value their space. I said it already, but if you respect your where you live you, if it's a bedroom if it's a whole you know apartment if it's a whole house if you show that space respect and you know curate it to a way that makes you feel good to me that is showing yourself respect and if you have any degree of self-consciousness of like oh this makes me look like i care too much and so there's kind of the idea that it's not cool to care about this stuff First of all, I just reject that entirely. Um, but second, I think the reality is, if nothing else, you are showing that you care for your space and yourself. And other people in your life, whether it's your family, people you already know, or people you want to know more, people you are courting or whatever, those people want to know that you care about yourself and your space and them 
as an extension of caring about your space. And I assure you, if you have any friends who think it's not cool to care about that or whatever, have expressed anything like that, when you have a place that is cool, nobody says that. <laughs> like Nobody will look at Paul's space and be like, that's not cool that you cared about your space to make it cool. Literally, nobody will think that ever. So get that out of your mind and know that like you will feel better by having a place that feels better. And I know that you're watching this on a channel that is an Airbnb based channel, right? Or at least that's what it appears to be. So much of the content talks about short term rental and all that. I think all of this applies to that. But rather than showing respect to your space, so showing respect to yourself, I think showing respect to your space and, and curating it in a way, whether it's masculine like this, or it could be a pink, it could be one of the, you know, an absolutely all pink place that's curated immaculately, that's showing respect to your guests. Your guests will feel that, it will resonate with people. And whether they're just looking at it online, wishing they could stay there or booking your place, or in it and about to leave a review, if you show that space respect, you are much more likely to get good reviews and get good feedback on that space because they feel respected, they feel seen, even if, you know, it's just because you put a guitar on the wall. Even if you do it on a budget like we did here, it still shows that you care. All right, y'all, I hope you got something out of this. As always, check out our website, madeware.com, and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to get notified if you haven't done so yet, and appreciate y'all. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Is this brand new information to you? Does this, you know, do anything for you? Did you learn anything? Or whatever. It's all good, y'all. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. And just why that is so satisfying. To me, I just love being able to give people an experience and something that they're really, really gonna enjoy and benefit from. But all right, uh, that was a lot of fun. I hope that was helpful for y'all. I hope y'all got something out of that. God, it's dark. Right, okay. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.